and welcome back welcome back after a brief little summer hiatus a couple of weeks hope you're doing well i'm dave gara this is the weekly leader welcome back again where we take two stories and one leadership issue and we put the leadership spin on it so without any delay let's get started wow and it seems like the whole world has gone crazy since the last time i was on here uh, um, I mean, it's been insane. A lot of stuff going on, and and apparently, you know, it's only going to get worse because the summer is coming and it's hot, and and we're coming out of the pandemic. If that's what we're trying to blame this on, but even then, there could be something else. All right, so let's tackle the first thing. The 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 latest thing, the biggest thing is is the situation in Uvalde, the Rob Elementary School shooting, and then the how it was handled or mishandled by the uh, the police there and the police chief and the, the, the site commander. Folks, um, you know, it, it's nonsense because one, they're supposed to be running towards where the problem is. Firefighters run towards the fire. Police are supposed to run towards where the, uh, the issue is, the, the law is being broken, the crime is being committed. And infantrymen, when I signed up to, to be an infantryman and I joined up, uh, we, run, we run towards the enemy. Everybody else should be fleeing. Everybody else should be going in the opposite direction. First responders go in the direction everybody is fleeing from. But when the leaders are asking, are basically telling them, no, stop, don't go in, we might get shot, don't go in, um, you know, it's not an effective leader, especially those that are leading those individuals that are supposed to be going towards the trouble, those that are supposed to be going towards the problem. And when an individual is not able to do that, not effectively do their job, guess what? They are not leaders. When they're telling them, hey, we might get shot. Well, that's why you signed up, you know? I know you didn't sign up to get shot, but that's part of the job, that's part of the deal. And if you cannot effectively do that in as a leader, if you cannot effectively lead your, your team to do their job, the job they're supposed to do, even at the most extreme stress situation, you don't belong in a leadership position. There should be, there's no confidence in you as a leader. And folks, th it just should never have happened. That should have been taken care of right off the bat. Um, it doesn't matter whether they've received that training or not. Still, they know there's a bad guy. That bad guy must be addressed, must be uh, uh, taken care of. And when they're failing to do that, that's just, what is it doing? It's encouraging more bad guys. It's encouraging more bad stuff to happen because, hey, you take that hands-off approach. Well, we're going to do this a little different than what we were taught, what we've been trained, what we're supposed to be doing. And folks, when that happens, we've got nothing but trouble at that point. All right, the next thing, and, and it's not as, um, definitely it's not, not as relevant, not as important as that situation in Uvalde and all of the other shootings since then. But uh, it is one that does need to be addressed. And that's the, uh, the uh, Depp versus Heard defamation trial. And... It's um, it's one of those. It, it's it's divisive. It, it's also one of those that it, it, it stops you, and it, it makes you ask questions, and it makes you understand that yes, there will always be three sides to every story, right? Person A side, person B side, and then the truth, the actual truth, that version of it, the third side, what actually did happen. And so it, it's one of those that actually now makes us realize that sometimes going in headfirst, uh, diving into the shallow end, not thinking it's the deep end, but it turns out to be the shallow end is not a good thing. And as leaders, we must encourage our team members, our followers, those that, that follow us. We must encourage them to, hey, look at the big picture, look at 360 degrees. And I say it, head on a swivel. Always look at everything. Look at everything from every possible angle, because if you are looking at it one sided, you're looking at it wrong and it's the wrong side. There are 360 degrees in a circle. You can't just be going, you know, no, you have to be looking at it 100, 360 degrees all the way around because there are some truths, there's some lies, and then there's the gray area in between. As leaders, you must train your individuals, your team members, your, those that follow you, you must train them to actively, critically look at the situation for what it is, for what others believe it to be, and of course, for what they, they themselves see firsthand and not take everything at face value because, hey, it's the convenient thing. It's the popular thing. It's the thing everybody's thinking about. And again, when people, are, when everyone is thinking the same way, 
someone is thinking wrong. And it's that simple. That's, that's group think. And when group think is, is in effect and it's driving everything, it's not going anywhere. It's going in the wrong direction, folks. So again, as leaders, ensure that you make individuals aware that there are other sides to the story and that that is the need is to understand that the other sides exist for a reason and they must also be included as part of the conversation. All right, so that brings us now to the leadership issue at hand. Leadership issue at hand is uh, leaders. Leaders are, are long-term thinkers. They, they, they must look over the horizon. Leaders must play the long game. Leaders must be in it for the long haul. There is no quick fix to being a leader. There is no quick solution to being a leader because what you do today will impact what happens further on down the line tomorrow and the day after. So leaders, you should be playing that long game. You should be looking over the horizon. Find a way. Now, I know none of us can be, um, none of us are fortune tellers. There's no leaders, no human being can be a fortune teller. And that's not it. But what we can do and what individuals can do at all levels is look at the past, look at the current situation, and that's usually an indicator of future results. For example, now, of course, we're going to say hindsight is 2020, but somebody was paying attention back on June 15, 1961, when East German leader, or well, I don't even know what he was, chairman or whatever, the East Germany, back in 1961, it was a country, said on June 15th, no one wants to build a wall. And then almost, almost what, June to July, two months later, exactly, almost to the day, two months later, August 13, 1961, the Berlin Wall was built. So again, that was kind of a foretelling of what was coming down, a foreshadow of what was coming down. So again, those that were paying attention were seeing that East Germany was starting to, you know, lock itself down. It was losing people as to the, they were defecting to the West. They were leaving to the West. They were being enticed to go to the West. And so they built the anti-fascism wall and that would be the Berlin wall. And that's what they called it on the other side. But they also had orders to shoot their own people if they tried to escape to the West, to West Berlin, to West Germany. There were orders to shoot those people. They were, and they, they did on occasion, they did. It did happen. And just look it up if you don't believe me, it did happen. So again, leaders that are playing the long game should be prepared to, well, to address issues as they occur. Again, to address issues, and I'm not saying, no, I'm not equating Walter Ubrich's statement and, and then the East German building the Berlin Wall, no, as the long game, but it, it is it is right there what actually happened. They set themselves up for it and they were kind of letting everybody know it's coming even though the statement was, nobody wants to build a, a wall right, to separate the countries, but they had to do something, they did something. All right, now it was the wrong thing, especially with shooting people. That's definitely the wrong thing. No, there's no order today to shoot anybody, no, no. And the same thing with leaders, being visionaries, looking down the horizon, again, being able to address, taking the past, working with the situations today, being able to address the future. And going that route, leaders, you should be, well, understand that, uh, you know, there are changes that need to come. There are changes that need to happen. And sometimes they're going to be difficult changes. But as a leader, you should be prepared to deliver and act on those changes because they need to be done. You can't just throw your hands up in here and say, well, you know, somebody might get hurt. And no, we can't do it. So don't go put out that fire. No, no, that's not what it's about. It's about understanding that there's an inherent danger in some cases some cases, not all cases, but it's also being well, well aware that you should have the confidence in the individuals that you have on your team to be able to take care of that inherent danger, to deal with that inherent danger, to fight through it and come out successful on the other side. You as a leader, you have no choice but to think long, plan for it, make it happen, and then execute. So there you go. But be a long-term thinker. Don't be short-term because that's where problems begin if all you do is just stop yourself every step of the way. So don't do that. Wow, that was a lot of information. But again, I want to thank you for joining me coming back again after a quick little break. Uh, again, it was a lot of stuff that happened and still more stuff to talk about. And again, the summer's just getting started and hopefully it's not going to be as bad as it was this past couple of weeks. But uh, again, um, it takes all leaders to act, be, and do what needs to be done 
and and have the wherewithal and, and the guts to actually act on it and do what needs to be done. Now, I understand that if some people get offended with what I'm saying and the way I'm saying things, well, that's on you because life is not sugar-coated. Life is not sugar-coated. Things are going to happen whether you like it or not. In some, some cases, things are already in place. And, you know, what's the biggest regret? The biggest regret is admitting that Dave was right in his forecasting, that Dave was right in something he said, as opposed to, well, I should have listened to Dave, but he was right, and I regret that. That's the biggest regret most people should have, but they don't. They don't. They'd rather get offended that someone is saying, hey, look, open your eyes to what's happening now, and not after it's already occurred. So again, be careful out there and understand that sometimes people say things because they truly, really mean it and they truly, really care about you and what's going to happen if you don't address certain situations. Folks, this world is crazy. And it's, it takes all of us to step up and say, you know what, enough's enough, we're gonna do something about it. And it's just that simple. So again, think about what's going on Think through it, look at all the different 360 degrees, and then develop your own, make your own decisions on what to do, and then go forward from that. But uh, hey, don't shoot the messenger. All righty. Well, listen, until next time, hey, don't forget to visit my uh, social media. There it is all up here. And thanks again for stopping by. Thanks again for watching. Do appreciate you. And we'll see you on Twitter. We'll see you on Facebook. We'll see you on YouTube. And we'll see you on, definitely on Instagram. So we'll talk to you then. Take care. Peace. Peace.